All right, this video is on related rates. Uh, it's day three of it, um, or at least your third video on it. And um, what you need to know is that you'll never need to know the volume of a cone. So if you want to write this down and like highlight it, it's one third pi r squared h. You'll be given that on the AP exam or whatever exam I give you. You will need to know like the area of a triangle or like the Pythagorean theorem, um, things like that. But this problem is about a cone, and you'll never need to know that volume. So we have a cone that's inverted, so it's flipped upside down. Um, it has a radius at the top of 8 centimeters, and it was full of water, so it's like a funnel. Um, the water's draining at a constant rate of 15 centimeters a second, 15 centimeters cubed a second, rather, so that's a volume. And then the surface level of the water is falling, obviously, so the, the water level is going down. Um, we want to know at what level is the water falling when it's halfway down, so halfway down the cone. So we have dreads here. We want to draw a diagram, so we've done that. We've drawn a diagram of what the cone looks like. We see that it's 20 centimeters tall, so we want to write down how tall it is. So there's 20 centimeters for the height of the cone. And then they also said it had an opening radius of 8 centimeters, which is here at the top. But you'll notice that if you go somewhere else on the cone, the radius is not 8. So just be aware that the radius is not always 8. So radius here at the top is 8. And obviously be careful in case they say di uh, diameter. So notice that the radius is going to be changing, so r is always changing. But that 8 will be helpful for us. What we usually like to do now is put the rates into like a box or something. So we have this box here, and we can put the rates into it. Um, let's think about the rates we have. Um, <laughs> we have the water draining, so if the water's draining, do you think that's going to be a positive or a negative rate? I would uh, venture to say it's a negative. So the rate at which the volume is changing, dv dt, right, is going to be negative 15 centimeters cubed. We also have this other information about the height of the cone and the radius of the cone, but most importantly, dv dt is negative 15. We'll use units to check later on, but for right now, we won't worry about units, because putting the units into the equation can be kind of crazy. So big, big takeaway here is it's draining water, so dv dt is negative. Volume is going down, volume is decreasing, so dv dt is negative. If you imagine like a slope of anything that's going down, it has a negative derivative. Um, Next, we want to know at what rate is the water level falling. So we probably should call the water level height, and we know that height is changing. So we should rewrite this black underline thing into dh dt is question mark. That's what we're looking for. And we want to know when the water is halfway down the cone, which is pretty straightforward because the cone is 20 um, centimeters tall, so halfway down would be when the height is 10, right? So when the height is 10. So that's a good amount of things. We don't have everything, but we do have, um, we do have a lot of it. We have the equation now, and we can actually probably differentiate that now. You can make your life easier when you differentiate this, um, or you can do it the hard way. The other thing I've just wrote down was uh, that the radius is 4. If you think about the cone, right, like this is a similar triangle here. So halfway down the cone, if the cone is um, halfway filled up, it's 10, then it's going to have a radius of 4. Sorry for the uh, slanty 4 there. So you'll notice that there's similar triangles going on. And similar triangles are going to be a really important piece of this puzzle later on. Keep that in mind, okay? So think about similar triangles later on in this uh, problem. There's one missing, like, link to getting these types of problems. So here's our equation that we want to derive. Um, we can just say pi over 3 r squared h. And we could probably just separate out the constant, or we could um, group them and do a product rule. Either way, we need to do a product rule. So we're looking to derive. We've done a diagram. We've done our rates. We've written down our equation. And now we want to derive, differentiate. So v derives to just dv dt equals um, if we think about this as the derivative of the first, we have to make sure we add a dr dt here. So that's the first, right? So derivative of the first. 
Don't forget our dr dt, and then we'll multiply by the second, which will be h. So we'll have, we're bringing down the 2. We have 2 over 3 pi r dr dt. Um, that's the derivative of the first times the second, which is h. times the second, which is h, plus the derivative of the second times the first, which is dh dt, the green thing, times the first. Let me get a little more space here. Okay, here we go. Good. Times the first, pi over 3 r squared. Okay, wonderful. So we did our product rule. Don't forget to do your product rule. Pretty important on these problems. It will cause your problem to totally die, fall flat. It won't be good. So now let's take what we have here, this ugly equation, which is actually the equation that tells you the rate at which the volume changes for any cone on the globe. This is an equation that has nothing special about it. It's just the volume of a cone derived, right? So every cone would work according to this equation. Um, now we're going to put the negative 15 in. We're substituting in from our black box. Not the black box from the planes, but just the black box from the math problems. Um, and then we got 2 pi over 3 times 4, which is r. dr dt we don't technically know right now. We do know the h at this moment. It's 10, so we'll put 10 in there. And then we'll fill in, I think we don't even know dh dt. Uh, we can probably fill in that r there at the end. So we got 10 plus, we don't know dh dt can pull this pi over 3 to the front, hopefully. That's an h there, just so you know. Put this underneath, because I'm running out of space here. <coughs> dh dt times pi over 3, and then r squared, I guess, is um, uh, 4 squared, so 16. So 16 pi over 3. There we go. Right on. Perfect. So now we have two unknowns. That's the bad news, okay? So everyone, let's just pause and think about this for a second. There's two things that we want uh, that we don't know, and there's one that we want to find. So clearly, we need to figure out what one of these unknowns is. And this is where related rates all come into play. We need to relate dr dt to dh dt somehow. If you remember the balloons that we blew up and stuck to the whiteboard, you remember that as one thing changes, everything is changing. As the volume of the balloon grows, the radius of the balloon grows, right? As the pressure in the balloon grows, right? As the pressure in the balloon grows, the uh, thickness of the rubber shrinks, the rubber of the balloon, right? So these things are going to be related somehow, and this is where the similar triangles are coming in. So let me draw a triangle here. And I'll show you that we have two similar triangles. Good thing we took geometry before we took calculus. They're right triangles. And we can use a proportion to set these guys up. So we remember drawing this a little earlier. We had 10 here on the height. 8 is that 8. That's the 8 from over there. We have a height of 20 overall. And then I think we remember that this was changing, right? There's this, there's this situation over here where we have, like, I don't know. I guess we could say that this... Um, I guess we need to find a way to relate these. So instead of like, instead of putting that 10 down there, we probably shouldn't do that. We should probably focus on that as a changing thing, right? Like that height of 10 and that radius of 4 is changing all the time. Would you agree? The 10 and the 4? The 8 and the 20 are never changing, but the 4 and the 10 are changing. So there's some sort of relationship. It's actually like a relationship of like a half um, in this case, or like a... Um, uh, two-fifths, actually, right? Two-fifths of the height is the radius. So what I want you to do is instead label with R and H variables because they're changing. The radius is changing. The little radius, the water radius, the level of the actual water. And the 8 and 20 never change. So I want you to make a proportion with these two things right here. And if you make a proportion with those two things right there on the top left of the screen, the 8 over 20 and R over H, you'll be able to get a second equation that you can derive. Maybe you know what I'm talking about, maybe you don't, but we're going to do it together in just a moment. 
So if you set up a proportion with these two um, variables, R and H, and 8 and 20, you'll get a new equation by cross-multiplication that you can actually derive. And once you derive that equation, it's going to be magic for you. It's going to save you. This is all because the water is dropping in that cone, but the cone always stays the same size, right? So now we have 8H equals 20R, and if we derive both sides, we have 8DH dt equals 20DR dt. Isn't that pretty important? If we have this equation in green, we have everything to solve our problem, correct? Because now we can get rid of whichever one we don't want. So 8H equals 20R. That means that 8DH dt, I'm deriving that green box, equals 20DR dt. Now we have literally, literally, wait for it, related the rates, right? We found the relationship between them. dH dt is 10 mm, fourths dr dt, or actually 10 fourths is not the best, so 5 halves dr dt. So dH dt is 5 halves dr dt. Let's figure out which one we don't want. We don't want one of them. So we should plug in for whichever one we don't want, so it, it, it dies, right? So the dh dt is, see that green arrow? That's what we don't want. So let's look at what that's going to look like. How is that going to change things? Well, oops. Here's how it's going to change things. Sorry, I got an issue here. OK, we're, we're finally here. We've got the following. We've got negative 15 is equal to 8 pi, actually let's, let's take all that and simplify it as best we can. So we're just taking this equation and, and bringing it over here. So um, 40, I think it's going to be 80 pi over 3. 80 pi over 3 dr dt, that's what we're looking for. Plus dh dt is 5 over 2 dr dt, right down here. So I'm going to replace that with 5 over 2 dr dt. That's the way we'll have dr dt everywhere, and that's what we're looking for. So 5 over 2 dr dt, that's dh dt. I just replaced dh dt with that. And don't forget that 16 pi over 3. That's still there. So I have negative 15 is equal to 80 pi over 3 dr dt plus this is going to be over 6. This is going to be 80 again, actually. 80 pi over 6 dr dt. And I guess the question means, then that, that means that if this is 80 pi over 6, it's actually 40 pi over 3. And now we can actually combine some stuff together. So we have 40 pi over 3. So 80 and 40, that's 120, 120 pi over 3 times dr over dt. And 120 divided by 3 is 40 pi dr dt equals negative 15. How are we going to get dr dt alone? This is what we're looking for this whole time. We're going to divide by 40 pi. So if we divide by 40 pi on both sides, we have our final answer. dr dt equals dr over dt equals negative, uh, if we divide this by 5, we get 3. If we divide this by 5, we get 8 pi. And so that should be your dr dt. All right, so you found the answer for dr dt. Um, that's good. You can come bring it to a decimal. Um, sometimes you'll want to round that to three decimal places. Does it make sense that the radius is shrinking as the water is falling out of the cone? Um, yes, I would say yes. Like as as the cone, the water is emptying, right, from the cone, the radius is going to shrink, so that's going to be a negative rate of change. So that's that problem, and then what you're going to do is pause the video and try this problem. Um, hmm. So this is what I was just talking about. Um, velocity, it, this is in a different example, but like, think about this. When, when you have a negative, that's representing something that's decreasing. So like, decreasing means a negative derivative. Um, so that's kind of what that remark is talking about. But you can kind of ignore this for a minute. Um, what I want you to do really is pause the video and try this problem. So give that a shot. It's a little bit different, but not a whole lot different. Take your time, reverse if you need to, and uh, we'll see you after that.